Hi guys, my name's Andy Crowley and welcome to the first lesson in this electric guitar starter series. In this first lesson, I'm going to be talking you through all the bits and bobs that kind of accompany the electric guitar, including uh, guitar choices, you know, the differences between uh, electric and acoustic and different types of electric guitar, amplifiers, pedals, uh, tuners, everything like this that you may need if you're just starting out on electric guitar. If you want to start playing straight away, click the link in the top corner here or in the description to get straight onto the first lesson in this starter course where I'll be showing you how to play your first kind of electric guitar riff. But for the remainder of this lesson, I'm going to be demo demoing gear and giving you my recommendations. Now, all the gear and equipment that I show you in this video is my own that I've bought with my own money. Nothing here is a paid endorsement at all. Um, they're things that I regularly use, uh, either myself or I bought to display to students for teaching purposes to show them my recommendations and I bought them myself because I believe in the product so much. If you want links to any specific product, all the links are in the description below, as is sort of a full page write up on my website of this video. So let's get cracking. This is my main electric guitar. It is an Epiphone Les Paul standard, and I really endorse Epiphones. I think they're fantastic. Um, Epiphone is essentially the budget sort of sister brand to Gibson, and uh, therefore the prices are substantially cheaper than Gibson guitars um, in general. This one is a slightly more premium uh, guitar than some uh, Epiphone Les Pauls, so the cheaper version is kind of the Les Paul Special 2, or there's a Les Paul 100 that are slightly, you know, more budget versions than this, and the difference is in the finish, um, not too many differences in the spec. The one thing that I upgraded in my Epiphone, in this one, is the pickup. The pickup is a Seymour Duncan uh, 59 model, and this is the case for it which has, uh, you know, the old pickup from this guitar in it. I dug this one out. Uh, so a 59 model humbucker. It models um, a PAF style um, sort of Gibson pickup, really. And um, that is the one upgrade that I highly recommend um, if you're not quite happy with the sound you're getting from an Epiphone. Upgrading the pickup is a very uh, inexpensive way of doing it. This pickup, I think, cost me £60. And then I paid, you know, a small amount of money for someone to change it for me to do all the wiring at the same time as getting a guitar set up where someone set the height of the strings and uh, changed the strings for a lighter set, um, that sort of thing. The other main model of guitar or the main style of guitar is a Stratocaster type guitar. Now this is a Yamaha Pacifica and you can see the differences in the body shape um, with the extra cutaway where my hand's kind of pointing through here. There is a cutaway on this one, but this one is um, a thinner body. You might not be able to tell too much on the video, but that does make it different to play and any other guitar that is kind of on the market is pretty much based on one of these two styles, the Les Paul style and the Stratocaster style guitar with, with the two cutaways. Um, a Telecaster is sort of in between these two and uh, the Les Paul type is typically um, better for heavier music and will give you a heavier tone and will be able to cope more with more uh, overdrive, so more gain. I'll be explaining all these terms to you as we go through the video. And um, the Stratocaster style, this one, typically gives you a cleaner, twangier tone. However, you can get very close to both with, with either guitar, depending on the amplifier and pedals that you use. The main difference between that sound um, is with the pickups. You can see that these two pickups here um, only have one line of, uh, uh, of the pickup here. And then we have two here. So this is called a single coil pickup because there's only one uh, coil of wire around this one, essentially, around a magnet is, is how they work. And these one, they, they have two coils, so they're um, not called dual ones, they're called humbuckers, because the idea is you get twice the amount of signal from one of these and half of the hum, half of the noise. So um, these pickups are the same here and the same whether they're covered or uncovered, you know, they're, they're, they're the same underneath this covering. Um, these are humbuckers, and they're what provide you with the the uh, the deeper, rockier sound or the heavier sound. 
Um, rather, rather than the body shape, but the body style and shape does contribute somewhat. But if you have a pickup like this, it's going to be heavier. And if all the pickups are like this, the single coil, they're typically going to give you a bit more of a twang. There are differences in the headstock that we can see here. Um, these are more for taste. And the advice I can give you for what type of electric guitar you can get is which appeals to you more which makes you want to play it. This is really the only question that matters and from there once you can narrow it down from the style that um, that you like, so a Les Paul type, a Stratocaster type, a Explorer type, whatever it may be, um, after then price you know plays a big factor and you can start to refine a little bit more. But is this one better or is this one better? There is no better, it comes down to taste. But there are those sort of key things with the pickups and the body shape that you can use to narrow down your choice. The next thing that I'd highly advise if you have an electric guitar is getting an amplifier. Now these can be simulated with any number of apps or anything like this, but you can't really beat a, a real live amplifier. This one is my own. This is a Blackstar HT1. And I think this amplifier is absolutely fantastic. I, it is a cheap, low wattage, um, amplifier from around 160 pounds, so around the 200 uh, US dollars mark, and I'll be talking you through the controls and demo with this. This is great as a step up from um, a guitar amplifier that you might get in any sort of starter pack. So if you get a budget starter pack or a you know 50 pound amplifier, um, this one is a great first step up from that. And similar low wattage all valve amplifiers are the ones that I recommend in general. So this is a one watt all valve amplifier, which is, in my opinion, much better than a 15 or 30 watt um, solid state amplifier. It's The difference is the way that the sound is created. This is sound is created by valves, which, you know, kind of is old world technology. But um, I really believe that, uh, that that is the sound that's better for you. If you want to try that out for yourself, you need to get down to a real guitar shop and try out a selection of amplifiers. If you want to know what to play, click onto the next lesson where I'll show you my recommended kind of first riff for electric guitar. But the fact is, unless you hear the amplifier in the same room for yourself, it is hard to just, even from videos like this, it is hard to judge sound qualities and sound different through a YouTube video. So I highly recommend get down to the biggest local guitar shop you can and try out a whole bunch of guitars and amplifiers. If you're buying them as a gift, then the starter packs are a great choice and the person could upgrade to any, any of the equipment that's in the starter pack when they choose to do so. So to make this guitar amplifier work and make noise, we need to connect the two with a lead. This is called a jack lead and the end of the lead looks like this and this goes into the end of our guitar here. So we connect it like this, click it in all the way, and then the other end of it goes into the input of our amplifier here, or your amp simulator. The definite thing you want to do is plug it in first and then turn it on. If you turn it on and then plug it in, you might get a loud bang sound. You're probably not going to break anything, but it's not going to sound pleasant. From there, we basically have a signal path. The sound or the audio from our guitar goes from the guitar to the pickup, into the lead here, travels along the, the lead into the input, and then goes through each of the controls on our amplifier, and then we hear the sound through the speaker. To record the sound, I'm actually taking the emulated output here, which I really think sounds pretty great and we'll be demoing more of this sort of stuff in a bit. But first of all, what do all these different controls mean? The first control we have is called gain, which is typically another word for overdrive or distortion. Turning up the gain increases the signal uh, or boosts it from the guitar and creates this sort of pleasant overdrive or fuzz or, or heavier sound. Um, that is controlled um, or overridden kind of by this button here. When this button is unpressed, um, we get a much cleaner sort of overdrive sound or a totally clean sound like this. And when we press this button, that's where we get 
a much heavier kind of rock sound. And if we press that button again, it kind of just sounds like your normal guitar, but louder and coming through the speaker. The next one on this particular amplifier is volume. Volume always just means loudness. Some people get this very confused with gain because by turning either one of them up, it will get louder. If I turn the gain up, the amplifier may get louder as a result of that. But um, volume is the thing that you want to control or keep lower when you want to turn it down. And typically to get the kind of classic rock sound, we want to turn the gain or the overdrive up and then keep the volume under control so we don't wake all the neighbours and get get people annoyed with you. So, to get this sort of sound, which I'm going to be showing you exactly how to play all this sort of stuff in the in the upcoming videos, um, keep the volume down, but turn the overdrive up and make sure you're on what we call the dirty channel, which is that one, and then the clean channel is like this. The next thing we have on this amplifier is something called EQ, which is typically um, low, middle and high in kind of a frequency range, equalization of the frequencies. Um, this particular one, all of that is on one control, which is um, really easy and fantastic. And um, all we want to do to f have that essentially doing nothing is have it straight up. So when the other controls are doing nothing, they'd be at zero. But this one not affecting the sound is at 12 o'clock. And that sounds like this. And if I turn this control all the way to zero, it's actually, in this case, it's kind of boosting the uh, the middle frequencies and simulating what they call more of a British sounding amp. So simulating more of an old school Marshall. And if we turn it all the way this way, it's simulating more of an American sound, which is with those middle frequencies taken out. So it's kind of got an awful lot heavier there, but we haven't had to adjust anything other than just the, the frequencies that are in the amplifier. Um, as I say, all of that sort of thing can be done individually with bass and middle and treble, or you could just get bass and middle. Typically, the more control you have, that's kind of a better thing. But also, you just want to kind of get the amplifier in the first place that gives you the sound you want before you touch any equalization or EQ or anything like that. So this is where you can't really be trying out a few amplifiers in a guitar shop or any that your friends may have, that sort of thing. The final control on this amplifier is reverb, which is an echo sound typically simulating a, the sound of a room. So without um, any reverb or echo, it sounds like this. And if we turn it up to halfway, you can hear we've got this room sound. So I say it's an echo, but echo typically is more of a delay, um, which is a repetition of the sound. This reverb simulates the sound of a room. And the more you turn it up, the bigger a room it simulates. So that will kind of colour it too much. You can have a little bit of reverb, it does make some riffs. Kind of, kind of brings them to life a little bit, but typically I normally keep the reverb off and they're all the things, the controls that are affecting the sound on our amplifier. Now, as I say, this one has an emulated output, so it simulates the sound of this, you know, takes the sound of, of the amplifier and puts it through another jack lead so that I can record it through uh, through my recording equipment for this video. That would mean that you could um, listen to your guitar amplifier through headphones so you're not annoying the neighbours. And then we have another um, line input, which is so that you can even take the music or backing tracks from your computer or your phone or an iPod or anything like that and uh, plug it into here so you can, if you haven't got kind of big speakers, you can have the track that you're playing along to coming through this and throughout this entire course we've got backing tracks that you should be playing along to. That's the intention of it. So um, that is a great way to do that, especially if the only speakers you have are the small speakers that are either on your phone or your laptop. It's going to sound a lot better coming through the amplifier. However, it's not going to sound as good as if it's coming through a proper speaker system. So it's the, the choice is yours. The availability is there. But I, in my opinion, that doesn't make or break a one particular amplifier or another one. All the better amplifiers don't typically have that input. It's just an option. And that's the guitar amplifier in general. 
After having your guitar, a lead and the amplifier, the next thing that I'd really recommend that you invest in, and it costs as little as a few pence, is a guitar pick. Now we do have Andy Guitar branded picks, so we can see one there, in uh, available from my store on my shop page. One thing that a lot of students complain about with any picks is that they drop them a lot. And the one um, pick that I'd recommend if you do drop your pick all the time is a Dunlop Maxi Grip pick which has a sort of textured edge to it and especially when I'm recommend recommending that you hold the pick between your thumb and your first finger like this um, we'll have more detail of that on the website if you click through to there how to hold a pick um, that can be a lot of struggle it can kind of move around people's fingers kind of spin around so if that's a struggle for you, Dunlop Maxi Grip Picks, and this particular one is a 0.73, which kind of does everything. It will do the strumming, it will do the single string picking. Um, that's a real a, a real goer for a lot of people. I really think um, if you drop your pick, that's a good example to go for. The next most crucial thing to make sure you get is a tuner. Now this one is a clip-on style tuner by TC Electronic. It's uh, really super because it tells you what what note you're actually playing and so for example if i hit my thick as e string you can see that it's a little bit low there but it is saying an e if i change this note so maybe if i put it down and i want it to be a d to put myself in something called drop d tuning um, it actually tells me that that note is a d and a lot of tuners don't work unless they're in standard unless you're going for standard tuning and that's the same with a lot of apps especially the free ones they don't tell you what note you're tuning to so it's hard to put yourself in other tunings now that might not be you know the most important thing at the moment but it is a good thing to know that some tuners offer as you go forward if you need a free tuner just download guitar tuner from the app store i believe it's on android but i don't know 100 percent but at least it's a free app to make sure you can get your guitar in tune but make sure you know that only works in standard tuning and you might want to get yourself something like a clip-on tuner to make sure that you can do some other tunings later on. Now we are talking about electric guitar here, so you might want to invest in a guitar strap. A guitar strap simply allows you to be able to stand up and uh, look cool while you're playing your electric guitar. Now is that absolutely essential? No, but why not go for it when guitar straps cost as little as a, around a fiver? So I'm sure you can get them for $5 as well, but I know they're for sale for £5 in the UK. Um, it allows you to stand up and um, not only look cool, but there's a tendency when we're playing guitar, electric or acoustic, when we're sat down all the time, to kind of hunch over and kind of want to look at our fingers like this. And, you know, it's quite common for people to complain of neck ache. And I, I've certainly been in that, in that position uh, in, in the past, just from kind of leaning over and doing this. And if you stand up, it suddenly kind of eradicates a lot of those problems. Um, the best advice I can give you is all straps are adjustable with the the length of them and if you set the strap while you're sat down then it shouldn't matter whether you're stood up or sat down it will be in the same place but when you're stood playing guitar it should sit in a lot more natural position and your strumming hand in particular will sit in a nice position for you to be able to play these riffs and if you sit down especially if you kind of slump on the back of a couch like I know many people do when they're practicing because you're practicing at the same time as watching lessons or whatever it's the guitar slumps down like this you play like this and it's not the correct way to practice you're going to develop a lot of bad habits so set the strap length while sat down and then practice stood up as much as possible the Les Paul type in particular can be quite heavy so if you want to stand up with it maybe do it 50 50 or consider a, a lighter guitar um, but again that's why you'd go down to guitar shop and try these sorts of things out for yourself but electric guitar definitely go for the strap if you start gigging either professionally or just with a band it can be handy um, to either get strap locks or what I recommend just put a washer on your guitar so there's no way my strap is going to come off um, even if I swung it around my neck which I'm not going to do but even if I did um, because I have a washer on it at both sides and my strap's not going anywhere it's a nice little tip they're the bare essentials to make sure you can do everything that's in this course so we'd have um, electric guitar of your choice a lead, the amplifier, picks, tuner, 
and then hopefully a, a strap at some point. Um, that should take you through around the first year of playing electric guitar, no worries at all. The extra things that I'd really recommend, just as a couple of little extras, at some point you're going to need to change your guitar strings. Now the guitar strings that I recommend, and I recommend in Ernie Ball strings, because they offer the um, thinner strings, which are fantastic for guitarists, especially beginner ones, and especially when you, if you start doing the harder stuff like string bending, thinner strings are fantastic. When you first start out, a lot of people, even on electric, complain about big lines on their fingers and the fact that um, guitars are really, guitar strings are really hard to press down and hard on your fingertips. Thinner strings really helps that, in my opinion. And you can try them out just by buying a set, changing the strings and going for it. And the other thing is, make sure you change your guitar strings around at least every six months. And if you're playing really regularly, maybe every three months or when you see that they're kind of visually not as bright as, as they once were. But it can be kind of, you know, you, you don't always tell that the strings are losing their brightness um, when, when they're on. So at least every six months. I think a lot of people either online or beginner beginners have a pathological fear of changing their guitar strings. It's something you've got to get over. Guitar strings are, you know, like, like pencils. You, you, you're constantly going to go through them and, and kind of they will break and they are consumable things. They're, you're going to go through them. They're not going to last forever. Um, you can extend string life with something like fast fret, so kind of coating the strings with uh, something called fast fret. But really, you want to be changing your strings typically more often. And the thickness of these strings go from 8 to 38. And um, if that's a bit too thin when you try them out, um, the, the other ones could be 9, so that would be 9 to 42. That's the pink set. Um, but I highly recommend thinner strings, especially for beginner electric guitarists. Um, it will make everything easier to play, be more forgiving on your fingers, and I'm sure you will thank me again at some point. Another great thing to get yourself if you're learning electric guitar as a beginner, or at any level, is a capo. Now a capo essentially clamps down the strings at a certain fret. In this particular little short starter course of mine for electric guitar, we don't use a capo at all in this course, but for loads of beginner songs that are on my website that work for both acoustic and electric, we do use a capo. Now this is a trigger style capo. There are many different ones available. I don't recommend any particular one. This is just one that I kind of grabbed to hand. And this one, it looks like this. I do recommend the trigger type guitar because you can squeeze it and put it on more easily. And they are as affordable as, you know, two or three dollars. So a couple of quid on eBay. If you're unsure about them, just give one a go for a couple of quid. And um, it essentially means that we can play the same chord shape, for example, an E. And then move it higher up the neck by putting the capo on. We can play that same E shape, but it sounds higher. So we're changing the key. Um, as I say, not essential for this course, but highly advised for any beginner. The other awesome thing we can check out with electric guitar is guitar pedals like this one. This is a Tube Screamer TS-808. It's a bit of a vintage one. Um, what is secondhand? And um, pedals, guitar pedals for electric guitar can do any number of things. You can even make your guitar sound like an acoustic guitar by plugging into a pedal like this. Highly recommend kind of checking out what's available. They're pretty inexpensive. You know, they start from 20 or $30, especially secondhand, um, up to whatever price you want to pay for them. But they do such a range of things. If you buy individual pedals one after the other, just to try and try them out, um, it can get a bit expensive. So one way to kind of get a lot of pedals on mass, and a thing that I got when I was a beginner electric guitarist, is a uh, multi effect. So this is kind of, you can kind of tell by the look of it, many of these sorts of pedals doing any number of things. Far too many for me to demo in this particular lesson at home. This one's even got a whammy pedal which controls everything from the volume to giving you a wah-wah pedal to making your guitar sound like a bass or a kind of space laser. This thing does absolutely everything. Um, these are available from anywhere from £100 to £200, um, again up to whatever you want to pay. I think knowing that they're available 
is a great idea just to keep an eye out when you feel like you know you're learning songs and you're not able to recreate the sound because it maybe does use a wah wah pedal or it does use delay these are a very affordable way to kind of get all your pedals that you could ever hope for and more all on one you know starting from very budget in in the multi effects range they're pretty good these days or you can go what many guitarists prefer and buy individual pedals and you know these make uh, great pedals for a guitarist in your life or to you know ask your mum and dad or friends for for, for Christmas because um, the single guitar pedals are quite inexpensive and they are awful fun when you get into them so something to consider but not essential when you're first starting out but they are there for your consideration when you fancy them and that's everything so I hope you've enjoyed this kind of walkthrough if you want more information kind of written down with links to everything um, that I've mentioned in this video click through to the website link should be in the top corner or, or the first link in the description and you'll see a bit of a breakdown on it but for uh, my full electric guitar starter course the link should be on the screen now and I hope to see you in that lesson it's a series of 10 videos that are going to really show you all the basics required to play electric guitar so I hope to see you in one of those videos please subscribe if you haven't already thank you very much for watching guys bye for now